Enabling Office 365 Services Exam Ref 70-347 Managing Clients and End User Devices One of the challenges in deploying and managing Office 365 for traditional IT departments is that Office 365 is designed around the idea that users are able to install and configure their own applications rather than having the deployment and management of management of applications occur centrally by an IT department. Uh, in this video uh, you will be reminded of not only how you can enable or restrict users from performing their own deployments but how you can manage the deployment of Office 365 applications centrally uh, monitor the functionality of those applications as well as allow for the configuration of Office applications you will also be reminded of some of the differences between the Valium license versions of Office uh, 2013 uh, traditionally deployed and managed by IT departments and Office 365 Pro, Pro Plus, uh, the version available through Office 365. Um, objectives in these chapters are the uh, manage user-driven client deployments, manage IT deployments of Office 365 Pro Plus, set up telemetry and reporting, and plan for Office clients. Objective 1.1 Manage user-driven client deployments one of the great advantages of Office 365 is that it provides end users with the opportunity to perform self-service deployment of software to their own devices. While this has uh, definite advantages, empowering users to do this degree uh, to this degree can also lead to problems such as users exceeding their allocation of Office 365 Pro Plus licenses. This objective deals with how you can restrict self-provisioning of Office 365 Pro Plus, Windows Store apps and mobile apps, and how to manage and revoke activation as well as Office for Mac. Restrict self-provisioning of Office 365 Pro Plus. Depending on the policies of your organization, you might want to allow users to install software directly from the Office 365 portal. To restrict this ability entirely or to allow users to install some applications but restrict them from installing others. Office 365 Pro Plus is the version of Microsoft Office that is available to appropriately licensed users in an Office 365 tenancy. Office 365 Pro Plus includes the following software products. Access Excel, InfoPath, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, Publisher, Word, and depending on the Office 365 subscription associated with a tenancy, the Skype for Business, Project, and Visio applications might also be available. Um, so Visio and, uh, and Project are also are, are normally available in an E5 subscription, um, and the, the, the above list of software is normally available on an E3 subscription. On the Office 365 Admin Center under Service Settings and then User Software, um, we see that on this example um, you can disable either Office and Sky for Business. It's only one package, 
so um, from here you cannot disable individual software we'll, we'll see that later uh, so you could disable either uh, office and sky for business and SharePoint designer um, so if you don't want users to uh, install their own software basically you uncheck those boxes and basically you have restricted self-provisioning of software that means that someone in the IT department will have to install uh, the software uh, manually for uh, users in this company the software that users will be able to install depends on the type of Office 365 subscription uh, different Office 365 subscription have different software options um, it is also likely that software options will change uh, for example Office for Mac 2011 will change to the Office for Mac 2016 version um, actually um, at this point in time uh, if you go to the new admin center it has already changed uh, in the same token the link for the Mac or whatever reference to link will be changed to um, uh, Office to, to uh, a Sky for Business uh, 2016. Um, so th this table is a little bit outdated because the um, Office 2016 and the Sky for Business is already available. So if you go to the new admin center, um, you will see that all references is to Sky for Business and uh, Office 2016. Here's a, a picture of the new admin center and uh, so software is actually accessed through the uh, services and, and add-ins gear uh, look at the arrow there and uh, from there basically you scroll down and go to uh, software download settings and, and then notice how uh, as I was saying a lot of things have changed now uh, instead of using link then um, they use Skype for Business and you have still an option to uh, use either the uh, 2013 version of Office or the 2016 version of Office and another important thing to um, notice here is that if you look at the how often do you want users to get updates for Office uh, 2016 apps um, you can do it uh, every month which is what is called the current channel and, and by default you probably don't want to do that because you don't want people uh, you know uh, especially you know normal users to get software um, so often people sometimes like to wait and, and test or um, and or you can do it every four months which is referred to as the deferred channel and normally that's the default a lot of companies do that um, so but basically this is the new look and you can basically just uh, turn on and off the software that you don't want to be uh, available for users while you can make Office 365 software available to users through the Office 365 uh, portal as we saw it in, in the previous slides this doesn't mean the users will automatically be able to successfully install uh, the software um, there's a couple of requirements um, so first of all to successfully run Office 365 users will need to um, uh, will need an Office 365 license if you don't have a license then you can't do anything um, and, and just keep in mind there's no product key associated with Office 365 Pro Plus um, a product key is for the traditional Office uh, 2013 um, Pro version okay so Office 365 Pro Plus requires a license you don't need to install a product key um, also you need to keep in mind that for users to be able to install the software uh, that they downloaded from the Office 65 portal they will need to have local administrator privileges on their computer and <clears throat> this is this is a big issue because in a lot of company uh, users do not have local administrator privileges so that means that in most big companies 
uh, users cannot install the software, but the software has to be provisioned from the IT department. Um, basically, this means that self-provision of software through the Office 365 portal is a suitable strategy in bring your own device strategy or BYOD, uh, which again, um, a lot of companies are using, but many companies are not using this strategy. So in, in BYOD scenarios, you know, where the user is the owner of the computer and is responsible for its configuration, uh, in this case, self-provision of software is less of a concern for most uh, environments where each user is assigned a computer with a standard operating system, um, yada, yada, yada. So uh, again, just keep those things in mind. Uh, if you do not make Office software available to users, they will see a message that informs them that Office uh, installations have been disabled when they navigate to the software page in the Office 365 uh, portal. Also keep in mind that Office uh, 365 Pro Plus is only uh, or can only run on uh, the following operating systems. Okay, So that means basically anything after Windows 7. Uh, what that means is that if you're still running an all Windows Vista or Windows XP, you're out of luck. You need to upgrade in order to use uh, Office Pro Plus. Office 365 and mobile devices. Microsoft has made Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote apps available for the Windows Phone, iOS, Android and the Windows RT mobile platforms. There are several ways that you can install these apps on these devices. The first is to navigate to the Office 365 portal using the mobile device on which you want to install each application and select the app that you want to install from the list that is available. And, and from that point on you just basically follow the instructions. Uh, what the links over here do, it's basically will take you to the app store of that platform, whether it is Apple or uh, Google Play, which is for Android. Um, so, so again, you could also go directly on the uh, either Google Play or, or the Windows App Store or the Apple App Store and just download the you know application that, that that you want and at that point then you will be asked obviously once you download the app to ins um, uh, log in with the email address and the password of your uh, of your account uh, for office 365 reduced functionality mode if office 365 pro plus is not in an activated state, it enters what is called reduced functionality mode. In reduced functionality mode, um, users you know, can open and view documents, but they are restricted you know, from creating new documents or making modifications to existing documents. When Office 365 uh, Pro Plus is in reduced functionality mode, users are prompted to reactivate the product on a regular basis. Regular reactivation. After Office 365 Pro Plus has been activated on a computer, additional activation checks must be performed every 30 days. Uh, this automatic activation checks occur automatically when the computer connects to the internet. If the computer does not connect to the internet for more than 30 days, then Office 365 Pro Plus will enter reduced functionality mode. So basically that means you need to connect the computer to the internet um, within that period. There's no way around this. Office 365 depends on the internet. So if a computer is not going to be connected to the internet, well then Office 365, it's not for you. Um, regular reactivation, again, so um, after Office 365 Pro Plus has been activated on a computer, the additional activation uh, checks must be performed every 30 days. So here is the property of a user. 
um, if you go to licenses well so as you see this user um, important thing is that when you set a license you have to set a user location uh, that it's mandatory um, this is an Office 365 Enterprise E3 subscription um, and basically here you see the software that it's available uh, the options that it's available uh, for this user from here you can um, obviously you know by default everything is enabled but if let's say you want to uh, disable let's say that this user you don't want to use uh, Sky for Business well you basically um, uh, on check that box and for this specific user then when they install um, or when they try to install the software the Skype for Business will not be available. Deactivating Office 365 Pro Plus. A user can have a maximum of five installations tied to their Office 365 account. Should a user who has reached their five installation limit need to install Office 365 Pro Plus on a new computer, they can deactivate one of their existing installation as a way of reclaiming the license. Uh, deactivating uh, an installation does not remove the software from the computer on which, on which it is installed. Uh, while it is possible to run the software after it has been deactivated, the software will be in reduced functionality mode. When you try to run Office for the first time or Office, uh, an Office application that has not been activated, you may be presented with this, uh, uh, with these options. On, on, the, on the left, what is this product deactivated okay and now you want to activate it again or you want to activate it for the first time uh, you have two choices enter a key or sign in well again if you are an office 365 subscriber if your company uses office 365 remember there is no product key to enter do not click on enter the product key because you don't have a product key. A product key is only available for the traditional install version of Office 365, not the Office 365 one. So for Office 365, you would click on sign in and then you enter your email address. If you have been given a license and if you have uh, not been restricted to use Office, then Office will be activated. Again, if you don't know what kind of ver what version of Office you have, then well, you need to contact your help desk department. And um, if you know that you have Office 365 but you still cannot activate Office, again, you may not have the right version of Office, or Office may have been restricted for your account. In either case, yes, you need to talk to IT. Office for Mac. At the time of this recording, actually at the time of uh, this reference guide, uh, Office Pro Plus was uh, only available for computers running Windows operating system. Uh, so until Office 365 Pro Plus is also available for the OS X, uh, OS 10 uh, operating system, users with computers running the Mac uh, OS uh, 10 operating system can obtain the Office for the Mac 2011 from the Office portal and activate the program using the uh, Office 365 credential. As a matter of fact, Office 2016 is already available. Uh, Office for the Mac 2011, in this case 2016, includes Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and Outlook. Activating Office uh, 2011 for the Mac with the Office 365 user credential consumes one of the five uh, available licenses, of course. So as I stated on the previous slide, uh, yes, so Office for Mac 2016 version is already available uh, and and obviously you still have the office uh, 2011 version 
um, it's it's funny how well the notice that link for the Mac is still available. Where in off in in the Windows platform is just Sky for Business. So uh, I guess that at this point in time, Microsoft still does not have a Sky for Business for Mac, but they have Link, which is basically it's the same product. It's just a, a kind of like a a branding decision. It's a business decision. It's just the name change, but the functionality. Uh, so Sky for Business and Link, exactly the same thing. Uh, please remember that Office 365 uh, Pro Plus, um, every user can install it in up to five devices. That means five computers or uh, you know computers and, and tablets, iPhones, Android, whatever. Uh, sometimes you install it on a phone and then you sell the phone but you never deactivated it. You know, so keep that in mind because it may come to a point in which in order to uh, if you change phones or tablets or computers, if you have used those file installation, then you won't be able to install it. So here you can see the computer name where you install it or, or the device, the operating system that that device was using, uh, the installation date, and then you have an option to uh, deactivate whatever you don't want. So if you have an old computer, you're going to give it away or, you know, to a family or sell it or, you know, it broke, then uh, go ahead and deactivate that installation. And then at the bottom, you can see over there how many uh, uh, remaining installs you have available. So when a user logs into the Office 365 uh, uh, portal um, with a valid license, you'll see uh, the software is available to you. You can uh, install individual uh, pieces of software, software components, or uh, you can install the Office, um, uh, what it says, Office on Install Office or More Devices option, click on Install, and then choose Install Office all at once. But let's say, for example, you have uh, an iPhone and you just want to install Word, well, you, you know, come here, you log into the um, Office portal, and uh, click on whatever application you want and just follow the instructions. Uh, this is the um, a picture of the, the screenshot in, in a Mac. So when you log in in a Mac, you're presented with this window. Uh, it's a little bit different than you know when you lo if you have a uh, Windows uh, Windows computer um, or, or yeah, Windows computer. So, but basically, you know, it's it's uh, it's really easy to understand. I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out. Okay, so we have come to the conclusion of this objective. What did we learn? Um, you can use the Office 365 admin console to restrict the applications that users can self-deploy. Uh, however, you can only allow or block them from. Uh, Office 365 Pro Plus. You cannot allow or block individual programs within the Office 365 Pro Plus such as Word and Excel. Uh, users can sell provision apps for mobile devices from the Office 365 uh, portal. Uh, selecting an application in the portal will open the uh, device vendors app store uh, to the chosen application. Office, uh, each Office 365 user can run five activated copies of Office 365 Pro Plus and or Office for the Mac 2011 or 2016. Uh, unactivated copies of Office 365 Pro Plus run in reduced functionality mode. Reduced functionality mode allows documents to be viewed but does not allow new documents to be created or existing documents to be modified. modified. Um, users can deactivate existing activations. Uh, when a user uh, does this, the application enters in reduced functionality mode. Uh, an activated copy of Office 365 Pro Plus must be able to communicate with uh, Microsoft servers on the internet every 30 days. If this communication does not occur, Office 365 Pro Plus will enter reduced functionality mode. Objective review questions. Uh, question number one. 
Uh, the key over here is how many activations um, or in how many different devices can a licensed user install Office Pro Plus. The magic number is five. So remember that if, uh, if you install it in more than five devices, if you need to make another installation, you need to deactivate. There's no other way around this. Uh, number two, uh, you have a variety of computers in your environment running a variety of operating systems. On which of the following operating system uh, is Office 365 Pro Plus supported? Well, so the key over here to remember is that Office Pro Plus is only supported on Windows 7 and above. So no Windows Vista, no Windows XP. And um, uh, after Office 365 Pro Plus is activated, what is the maximum um, amount of, of time that a computer can be disconnected from the internet before the um, Office 365 Pro Plus will enter in reduced functionality mode? And the magic number here is 30 days.